All right, we're gonna go ahead and kick things off now. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you're joining us today or when you view this. Um, my name is Jennifer. We have a, a few guests who are going to introduce in just a moment. Um, but for those of you uh, that have not joined us before, welcome to our office hours. All right, so joining us today, um, we have a special guest uh, whose picture you will not see on this slide, but you will see on a slide in a moment. Uh, Praveen, would you like to make a quick introduction? Yeah, hi. Um, happy to be here. <laughs> uh, um, and I'm, I'm part of the AppSheet team and have been uh, one of the founders so from the beginning. Excellent. Uh, so for those of you that, especially if you're new to the platform, this is a great opportunity to get some real inside information. And for those of you that have been around for a while, you've probably recognized Praveen. Um, you've heard his voice before, seen him on the on the uh, community forum. So thank you, Praveen, for joining us this morning. I'm also joined uh, by an old favorite, Rich. Rich, how are you? Hey, how's it going, everyone? Happy to be here. And Rich, do you want to introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, uh, I'm a solutions consultant on the AppSheet team here at Google. Um, basically, um, you know, help helping all our um, customers uh, achieve success on the platform. Excellent. So excited to have you here today. It's always great when you can join us. Um, and for those that haven't met me before, I'm Jennifer. I'm a product marketing manager uh, for AppSheet. Um, and I also do quite a bit of work uh, on the forum, interacting with all of you within our creator community. And then I am joined today um, by a somewhat noisy uh, co-host by the name of Roxy. If you've been around for a bit, um, you've probably heard her in the background a few times before. The reason for that is we are still in work from home mode. So if you give a delay in sound or screen, please forgive us on that. Um, I think actually garbage delivery is about to come. So you might hear some ruckus in the background on my end as well, and I apologize for that in advance. But uh, with all those caveats in mind, let's go ahead and get started. All right, um, so this list is deceptively simple today. We've just gone through our introductions. I have a re few resources to address, especially for those of you that are new to the platform, a few announcements to make. And then today we're going to cover barcodes and QR codes because that has been a trending topic in the community. Uh, we will be taking questions throughout this session as well as following up afterwards. Uh, in your little question box off to the side, there is a link uh, to the AppSheet Creator community post for this particular event. Highly recommend posting your questions on that thread, in part because if we are unable to answer during this session, it's quicker and easier for us to follow up afterwards on that particular thread. We also post a recording of this session on that thread as well. So do follow along uh, in that space. All right, so resources for those that are new. Um, I just mentioned this, but the creator community is a great place to start. Uh, it's community.appsheet.com as listed here. Within this space, you will find not only other AppSheet app creators who are well-versed in a number of topics, you'll also find those who are learning right along with you. We've put together this great guide on learning how to use AppSheet because there's a lot of different resources out there that can help and it might feel overwhelming, but this is a good place to start. Highly recommend starting with the free AppSheet Academy, which is our Udemy course. We have a few key articles and webinars um, and previous office hours that we'll link to within that space as well. So give that a look and let us know if it helps you at all. If you are a non-native English speaker, um, we do also have some great resources available for you as well that are community sourced. I think we're up to 22 languages now, if memory serves me correctly. Everything from Thai to French. Um, I know I saw a few Russian on there too, so please feel free to uh, look through and see what other app sheet creators have created for those that are either non-native um, English speakers or those that have clients in other areas of the world that might benefit from this as well. Can't recommend this enough. Um, for those that have contrib contributed to this, thank you. You've done exceptional work. All right. A few product announcements and then we'll, uh, we'll get into kind of the nitty gritty for today. Uh, so AppSheet Automation, we had a special event at uh, Next On Air, uh, part of the Google Cloud family. This was in early September. Uh, if you are interested in being part of our early access program, highly recommend completing this form. 
Uh, it's a great opportunity if you've never had a chance to test a feature in early stages. This is a really, really cool chance to participate. Uh, Praveen, did you have anything you wanted to add about the AppSheet automation piece? Um, just broadly that this is um, an area we're investing in quite significantly. Um, as you know, we've had workflow rules for quite a while, quite a few years, um, and those are relatively simple. Um, and what we're doing with automation is um, taking that same concept and making it richer, more powerful, easier to author. Um, so it's pretty exciting for us, but it's still early stage. So um, uh, yeah, we look forward to feedback as we open up this early access program. Excellent, thank you for that. And I'll be sure to post this link on the community thread for this as well. Um, we've uh, mentioned this in the past few office hours, so you'll be able to find it there, but we'll make sure it's cross-referenced here too. All right, uh, Google Workspace. We talked about this in length with my colleague, Chris Bailey, uh, two weeks ago, shortly after the announcement, but AppSheet is part of Google Workspace. If you have any questions on this, particularly around pricing, uh, we highly suggest reaching out to your sales rep we can also try to tackle a few of those questions for you as well. Um, but it's a really exciting announcement. Um, it's easier to access us via Sheets also. Um, and for more details, I can certainly link to our Office Hours webinar uh, from two weeks ago where we adjust, addressed this in greater detail. All right, so you now get to see Praveen's lovely face. Um, so next week, I believe, on the 28th, it's almost the end of October, Oh my gosh, uh, we have a very special discussion with Praveen and um, one of our app creators, so one of you who's chosen to share their story. Um, Praveen, I, I'm not certain if you have many details to share just yet, but if you have anything you'd like to say about this, um, please feel free. Oh yeah, uh, Munchal Savla, he's, um, he's, really, he's doing really interesting work. Um, he's in India, and there's a whole team of people installing um, uh, solar panel electricity generators in remote villages. Um, and that electricity becomes the primary source for uh, farmers to actually pump water. And so sort of these installation projects drive the economic health of these remote farmers. Uh, there's really remote areas, apparently. And uh, he's coordinating, he's sort of the project manager coordinating all of this. Um, and he's using AppSheet uh, to track this project because all those workers, people out in these remote areas are recording information and uh, allowing him to actually have a handle on this sprawling project. It's really interesting, a really articulate customer, very um, uh, forward thinking. So uh, a great conversation and I think you guys will enjoy it. Excellent. And I believe we'll also have a recording of that available afterwards as well for those in different time zones. Is that correct? Uh, I, I believe so. I believe that's a plan. Okay, excellent. Um, so for those of you that might be staying up until the midnight hours, we will have that available for you, but highly recommend uh, joining for that particular session. All right. Um, so we mentioned this a few weeks ago, but the editor refresh has been rolled out as a feature update. I think it's to 100% of our um, app creators now. We do encourage feedback. There's a few threads within uh, the creator community that we highly encourage you to engage with if you find bugs. Um, you'll note that some of the bug fixes that have come out in the past few weeks have been related to that. So uh, keep the feedback coming. Um, the Apogee connector is now in GA. I know we made this announcement a few weeks ago, but um, we do want to let you all know that that is available for you to go ahead and test out uh, as well. All right, so Rich, we're going to get into um, a little bit more of kind of your area of expertise here. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so, um, one of the ways in which we determine what topics to cover in these office hours is what's trending on the community. And I, I have a, a secret magic um, formula that I use to go through and see what you all are talking about. But this barcode post in particular from uh, early last year when we actually first created this new community space has been getting a lot of attention lately. I have my suspicions for that. Um, I, I will leave it all to you to inform me on why you're using it um, more frequently now. Um, one guess is because this has a lot to do with inventory and asset management, which um, is not only one of the most popular use cases for AppSheet, 
but just in really high demand right now in general. Um, so, and we'll we'll talk about this post a little bit more detail in a moment because of this link that they mentioned, but um, we're going to talk about the differences between barcodes and QR codes, how they're used, um, different ways in which you can use them, and kind of the technology behind it. All right, and we have some sample apps for you to see too. All right, so um, Rich, there are four big questions that have come up around barcodes and QR codes. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, really both of you on the spot and test your knowledge. So what is a barcode and what is a QR code? Rich, I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> so, so a barcode is a, you know, pretty much a, a one-dimensional representation of, of data that machines can basically scan and quickly import that data into whatever device uh, they're doing. So the limitation with one-dimensional barcodes in general is it can't hold as much data as say a two-dimensional barcode. And that's where we get into the QR code itself. It's data is you know, represented in two dimensions. It could hold a lot more data like hyperlinks or even paragraphs, depending on the complexity. And you know, one of the most important differences between a one-dimensional barcode and a QR code, in addition to the amount of data it could hold, there's also a fair amount of error correction built into QR codes to you know, prevent against inaccurate scans that you may get with one dimensional barcodes at times. Cool. Uh, Praveen, I don't know if you have anything in addition to add to that or. Oh, that was great. I'm still waiting for the three dimensional barcodes, but uh, until then. Yeah. <laughs> I've wanted to. Is that on the roadmap, Praveen? <laughs> <laughs> Top secret, can't tell you about it. Uh, all right, so we, we've kind of um, touched on the top three questions a little bit, but in terms of limitations, um, are there any limitations that either of you want to dive into a little bit deeper when it comes to barcode versus QR code? Maybe um, think of a couple use cases that you'd prefer a QR code um, over a barcode. Well, um, you know, I, I, I don't have anything off the top of my head. I mean, limitations, I kind of already touched on it. One, one dimensional barcodes, depending on the scanner uh, that's used, is prone to errors at times. It, you know, for example, it might capture, it might read one of those lines incorrectly, uh, especially with optical cameras. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Um, and then, you know, QR codes at times, depending on their complexity, yeah, uh, could be slower to read um, as well. So, and Rich, and, and, you mentioned. And, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Praveen. That's fine. Go ahead, Chan. I was going to say, Rich, you mentioned scanners, um, and I, th I think this is a really important item to highlight. Can you t discuss uh, what types of scanners um, app creators or their end users uh, might be able to interact with these barcodes and QR codes with? Uh, it's as far as I know, we're we're only supporting, you know, basically the the camera devices. I don't, so for me, mobile I don't phones. Believe, yeah, mobile phones. Uh, that's what we support at this time. Um, so any device with a camera, um, you could, you know, basically have barcoding built into your apps. Yeah, I believe you can also. There are a few customers who have bought what uh, external um, code scanning hardware. Um, because they might just be more useful in some industrial settings. So there are pieces of hardware you can buy which are barcode scanners or QR code scanners. You know, they, it looks like a little scanning gun. You point at a code and you can click a button to scan something. And some of those are attachable to a, to a phone or a mobile device. Um, and so that's another way if you really want to capture data. It's going to look like, a, uh, like entering a number into a text input, but actually it comes from the um, external external scanning device so that's it's a sort of a fringe case but we have a few customers doing that um, i wanted to add one point about the different kinds of codes um the two-dimensional codes typically have just more of an ability to do error correction as um rich was saying uh, but also there are a number of standards on these barcodes in other words uh yeah there's one dimensional two and two-dimensional barcodes or codes but there's some standardized ways to represent information utilizing that mechanism. And for different industries, they're different things. 
just as an example, in the United States, there's a standard way in which um, uh, your driver's uh, license information is represented on a barcode in your driver's license. Likewise, in different industries, in different parts of the world, there's some different standards. And so there's this additional layer on top of just the coding mechanism um, to represent certain categories of uh, information. Well, I, and that's really important to mention, Praveen, thank you for that. Um, an example of these standard differences, and I'll use a personal story. Way back in the day when I used to run operations for a restaurant group in New York, uh, liquor inventory once a month. Um, we used to have to do it all by hand. And then when we moved to a scanning barcode system, which was revolutionary at the time, but now a standard practice, um, our barcodes looked very different than like a UPC code you'd find in a, a grocery store, for example, on that same liquor bottle. Um, so if you're in the food or hospitality industry, that's just one use case. Um, but that, that distinction is quite important to point out. Thank you for mentioning that. All right. Okay, so let's get into uh, a couple of sample apps. Um, what I'll have you gentlemen do is I'm going to pull up the app. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit. And then if you actually want to talk me, guide me through, um, so our listeners get a verbal overview in terms of where to navigate to see certain things, I think that might be really helpful um, based on some of the questions we've received. All right, so uh, this particular app that we're going to test today um, I was going to build one, but I actually thought using one of our standard sample apps would be a good way to go, and I'll post a link to this, in part because it gives you the opportunity to really understand um, the way to structure your data successfully when working with barcodes and, and QR codes. Um, and we're going to stick with the theme of food, and apparently personal hygiene is included in this data table too. <laughs> so. Um, for those of you new to the platform uh, or those that have been around for quite some time, you'll notice the editor um, has a nice, bright and shiny uh, new feel. This is that UI refresh that we mentioned earlier. So let's see if I can make my screen a little more user friendly. Off to the side here, we have a list of different grocery items. As you can see, uh, let's click on potatoes, a good staple. We could certainly edit this if we wanted. But here's our barcode. And Praveen had just mentioned that there's a particular standard for codes um, used for different barcodes. So here you see a numeric value, and we'll pull up the inventory um, sheet in just a moment so you can see how this is represented. But this is our little scanner over here. Oh. Sorry. I have never seen it do that before. Um, uh, Joel, Praveen, Jen, put in the what did it do that surprised you? It changed the number, which I've not oh, yeah. seen before. Oh yeah, well, um, you're running this in the web in in um, emulator, and there's no scanner there. So just in order to be able to test anything related to a scanner in the in a web in environment, it always puts in that default value. So you can always sort of test it against some data that has that standard default value. But when you run that on a phone, it'll actually bring up your scan. Okay. All right, so that's one troubleshoot for us. Um, all right, so from here, um, so we've, we've seen one troubleshoot area for us already. Um, what I'm going to do now, is, so we've been working with potatoes. We see this barcode number here, this 873402, et cetera. We're going to go into our data sheet. So for those that um, are unfamiliar with this little trick we're about to show. If you click on view source, and I already have it pulled up, but if you click on view source, it will take you to the data source table for this particular application. I pulled it up in advance just because my Wi-Fi is a little slow today, but this is the same information that's available in that same sample app that we were just working with. So potatoes are what we were working with, and you'll see here this little, little gadget. So this is the potato line, but you'll notice that the barcode itself is invisible here. Unless I, no. The yeah, I think it's just, a, it's just the format of that column, I think. Yeah. It might just be in, need to be in text format rather than number format. Yeah. Okay. I think you just select the column and change its format.
Yeah, okay, so Praveen, good. for our um, our listeners who mm -hmm. are new to this, if we're selecting the format, talk me through it. Yeah, no, uh, in the there's a format menu at the top, you know, where it says file and edit and view uh, over on the top, uh, over there, that's right. So you pick that and then where it says number, you select into that. And then, uh, yeah, and instead make it plain text. Hmm. And then stretch that out. Well, it doesn't seem to like it. Um, I, I will go sort of brush up on my spreadsheet formatting <laughs> details, but that 8.73 there is the number that you actually had, um, you know, in row nine, 8.73 is really the, mm -hmm. uh, the number that you had um, over in the scanner, over in the application. Right. So for those listening, if you um, see something like this, it it should perform as planned. This is not unusual to see a few letters mixed in. So so just a heads up on that. Um, Rich, is there anything? So this is just a very preliminary view, obviously, for now. But is there anything that you would like to dive in deeper in terms of working with barcodes um, since we have the editor and the data table up? Yeah, I think one of the you know one of the the first areas you know to enable that is um, to enable barcodes. You could en enable it on any field, with the exception of of images and um, those type of fields. But any any text or number based field, um, you should be able to enable barcode scanning for. And to do that, you can simply navigate to the columns subsection of your data area, and then find the column that you want to. Uh, turn on barcode scanning for and hit the little pencil, the little edit button on the left side. And we have ours clearly labeled here as barcode. Yeah, there we go. That's that's easy. And then you're going to scroll all the way down um, to the bottom of, of these attributes under other properties. And you'll see the option here to make that field um, or that column scannable. And you simply check that and then that tells AppSheet that, hey, this is now a scannable field, and it will create that that little barcode icon um, within that um, next to that field for folks to be able to scan. Um, so by default, the field, the scannable fields, when you enable them, they're overridable, you know, by the users themselves. If you wanted to force users to actually barcode scan instead of manually enter any bark, you know, any numbers by hand because that's highly error prone. Um, you'd want to navigate to uh, the user experience section of the app. We go ahead and close this, Jen, now and um, click the UX section and go to uh, options, the options subsection. And you're going to scroll down and Keep scrolling until we find it, but there's going to be an option here to basically require that um, scan. There's this option called up oh, scroll scroll up. Sorry, it's it's um, it's right there. It's called the land uh, allow scan input override. And basically, if you want to force your users of your apps to use the barcode scanner, you're going to turn that off. Right, so that won't allow them to enter their own values. They have to use the barcode scanner on, on the device. Yeah, that was really interesting. As with many other features, it's not like we knew this was required. It actually came from customers using the product. Originally, anything that you scanned, you could also input by, by hand, just by text input. And then we had some customers say, no, I do not want anybody doing that. It has to be what they scanned and nothing else. And so that's kind of how we learned this is important in certain environments. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and having worked in um, some industries where I've seen that, it, it is a curious phenomenon how some users will stay, still take the, the more complicated route, even though that there is a barcode scanning option available. Never underestimate, uh, underestimate human behavior, <laughs> for one. Um, Rich, what industries would that have, those have been? Uh, this is more in the uh, you know distribution center construction type type area um, where you might be you know 
um, where folks might not be, you know, aware of, you know, barcodes themselves, you know, they might be new to the environment and they're basically guessing, right? So this is just another mechanism in your app to kind of control uh, the workflow and not allow users to make mistakes. I always like to, when you're designing apps, try to, you know, try to make those apps so that there's no way that your users can make a, a simple mistake because anything new is, is you know, that's going to be prone to happening regardless of, of you know, who's using it. Yeah, 100% agree. And, um, go ahead. and then the, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Floor is yours. Okay, well, yeah, I just lost it. Uh, I'll think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So I'll think of it and uh, I'll chime in later. All right. Uh, so my next question uh, was going to be, I was go going to move on um, to generating barcodes, but were there any other tips or highlights you two wanted to address or identify um, for right now while we'll sh we're still in the editor? I will take that as a no. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move on, Rich. If you if you think of um, what you were going to say, feel free to chime in. All right, so um, this again is just a, a very general overview on what the barcode sample app looks like and where we sourced it from again with that sample application. So um, I mentioned earlier that there was a, a very popular post uh, trending in our creator community. And that was this particular post. Um, Peter, who some of you might know or, or might have heard from on previous webinars, um, he did a great job breaking down working with barcodes, QR codes, et cetera. Um, but he has a really helpful link that he pointed out, and this is a question we received quite a bit, that in terms of where you source your barcodes. So this is a, a free tool um, that a number of our app creators have started to adopt. Um, that allows you to create your own barcodes. And I believe you can do multiple rows with this particular one. So you can do it for a large inventory sheet, for example, if you need to generate multiple barcodes, um, you can print them out, put them on little stickies to get them. I'll go back to the liquor inventory um, I used earlier, but put those on your little, your little stick things for your inventory for ease of scanning, whether it's with your phone or a device. But this is a great resource and we'll make sure that this is linked out um, in the office hour notes uh, for this as well. All right, Rich, you sounded like you might have remembered. Yes, I did. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so another area when, when using barcodes, you know, some, some questions that come up, how do I automatically make the scanner pop up when you enter a workflow within an app, right? So basic default functionality of, of an app is, you have to explicitly click the scan button in order to have the scanner pop up. So if you wanted that to happen in a more automated way, when users enter a form, you would go once again to the user experience section and then click on options and then scroll down to forms, the forms section. And there's this option here that's called advanced forms automatically. You'd want to turn that on. And what that does then is whenever you enter a form that requires scanning or even image capture or text capture, as soon as the previous field is filled out, it'll jump down to the next fields. So, you know, in some situations, you want to reduce the number of clicks that users have to click on, you know, to um, to navigate the app, and this would be another mechanism here to automatically just bounce around to the different columns in order to allow for a quicker data capture, which could definitely be, you know, the reason why you're using barcodes in the first place. Right. I'm using dog treats because my dog is currently staring at me, wondering why I'm not giving her any. Um. <laughs> All right, and then so, and this is mainly for your um, your end user, correct, Rich? Yes, it's for your end user, and you know, if you would want to make sure that your your barcode field is the first field of your form, in order to make that happen. Obviously, if you have a text field first, then you're not going to get that automatic, um, you know, 
the scanner will automatically pop pop up. So you want to make right. sure you structure your form for where the barcode is the first input, um, if that is the type of form you're creating. So let's go ahead and set that up. And Praveen, were you going to add something there? Yeah, so I was just going to, in terms of a scenario, uh, at least what I've seen a few times is um, people want to do inspections of things, and those things have barcodes on them. Mm -hmm. So what you really want the user to be doing is scan something and say, okay, scan something and say, okay. And you're just proceeding through that. And once in a while, there's something that's not okay, right? And so more information is needed about it. And that's why you want this sort of pattern of um, scan. You said, okay, it submitted a form and reopen to a scan again so you can scan the next item. So that's, that's a really helpful way of breaking it down. Um, Rich, why don't we go ahead and add or implement that particular capability um, since I know it's something we get a lot of questions around. Okay. So yeah, um, first thing you're going to have to do, if, if your barcode field is not the first field of your table, which probably is you know, typically not going to be, um, you're going to want to create a new slice. And by going to data, and then the, the uh, section called slices. And the reason why we're gonna create a slice is so we can reorder the fields for a form in a particular order that you know, we wanna design for that, that workflow, the form intake that we're making. So in this case, you know, Jennifer's given it a name, a source table, right? Connected it to the inventory table. And we're not gonna have a row filter condition on this slice as this is just gonna be used for a form. And then down below, we're going to choose what um, columns we want to add. So if the form just going to be to capture a barcode, we just scroll down, uh, click on the barcode field, and then um, what is that? Uh, click add, Jennifer, at the top there. Or no, that's right. Okay, you, you've clicked on it. And then um, and then uh, hit save. I guess this is uh, part of the, the refresh I never picked up before. Praveen, is, did I do that right? Is you just that... want to reorder them. You can just drag the barcode to the to the top. Okay. There you go. If you want it to be the first. And thing. we only want to have the. Oh, I, I see what's going on. Uh, we want to remove the other fields if if we're not going to need them as well. Yeah. So depending yeah. on that. You could click the little minus button next to those fields, but I think you select one of them. Yeah, you can just eliminate the things you don't want. With the exception of the key column, it looks like. Yeah. Which it tells you yeah. that you can't remove, which is great. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, at this stage, then you know we can go ahead and go to the user experience section and create a view that connects then a form view that connects to that new slice that we made. So we'll click new view, um, we'll give it a name and connect, you know, for this data, we're gonna connect it to that slice that we just made. And then we already have the form view type selected and, and that's it, that's all you have to do. You could choose where you want that view to show up in your app. And now when you're using this on a mobile device with those options we just implemented, when your users enter that form, that barcode scanner will pop up automatically now. Now we can't really show you in this app preview uh, window because it's on a browser, but if you're on a mobile device, it would now automatically uh, have that scanner pop up. So let me add a couple of things here on, in terms of patterns. Um, it's often the case that there's a table, let's say, of products, and each has a barcode. And then there's a separate table where you're doing, you know, uh, you're, you're recording available inventory, your inspection, or whatever it is. So uh, from the scan, you capture the barcode, and then you'll have a bunch of columns that do lookups into the product table to fetch back the information so you make sure you've got the right product, whether it's potatoes or bread or whatever it is. And then you record the inventory, you just 
how many at how much of this product you see in the ship. So that's sort of a common pattern. Um, the other thing is, Rich showed you sort of a conceptual way to do this, just create a slice and then build a form against it. Um, in the latest version of the editor, there's also a way to do this directly on the on a form on the original table. Um, and Rich, I'm not sure if you want to call that one out, but um, just in the form on the original table, you can select some subset of columns so that um, you can just show in the form the subset that you want in the order you want. Yeah, so yeah, um, so at the table level, you could, you know, like Praveen was mentioning, if we were to, you know, go find the form of the columns that we want to basically hide from view without having to create a slice, we can navigate to the, the columns section and open the inventory table up. And next to the, the show if, the, there's a show option for each attribute. Um, if you want to hit one of the pencil, uh, hit, hit the edit button next to a column, Jennifer. Probably. And, that's the key. Let me do it. Yeah, probably one. not the key, but you know any of the other ones. <laughs> but right there, I think if you, as you were scrolling there, Jen, there's an option to make to show or to hide any of the columns. So um, yeah, it's, it's right there. It says show, and if you uncheck that, then you don't see the image. That's across the whole product, across the whole application. Um, and you can also do the same thing just at the level of an individual form. So uh, without, it can show up everywhere else. You see the images right away. But you can choose to have the images show everywhere, but just not in a particular form. So you could do that too. So you'd, you'd probably want to check that back again so the images show. Um, but then over in the UX section, we can go to any particular form. So uh, let me see if I can find one. Um, um, yeah, you know, just create a new form. Just click click a new view and create a new form. Uh, and let's do it on the original table, uh, inventory table. Let's call that, give it a view name, you know, I don't know, let's say, you know, add inventory. Uh, add inventory, okay. Yeah. And let's add create a form view type. So it's on the right. Excellent. So this is you see the sort of preview of the form there on the right, right? It's got a name, category, image, and so on. Um, but let's scroll down in that form definition over on the left. Yeah, let's scroll down there. And you see, keep going past view options. You see column order. So click on add column order. Right up there. Yeah, let's click on add. And that lets you go choose columns now. <laughs> So let's go, yeah, let's put in uh, image first. Yeah. Uh, you notice it's just got an image and then say add and add anything else you want to it. So you can add all of the columns they show up afterward. Um, and you can just choose, uh, a you know, pick one other thing, the barcode, excellent. So now that's it, that's your form and you've hidden the rest of the columns. So you can do this just to the level of the form or you can do this in a more structured way by creating a slice, or you can do it across the whole application by just hiding the property, hiding the column. And yeah, thanks for being, I'll be honest. I, I wasn't aware that we had snuck that in to the app uh, editor uh, <laughs> yet. So that's awesome. It's a, so completely it's a dynamic, ignore it's a dynamic I, product, Rich. You got it. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> there's a little treasure, there's little treasures discovered each day. So yeah, definitely ignore the method I presented because that's that's the old way to do it. Now there's a even better way. Well, they, I think they both work though, don't they? I mean, they, slices versus a work. new way, but they they would both work. So don't discount yeah. yourself. Yeah, um, all, all that's happening is when you do this at the level of the form here, uh, under the hood, we're creating a slice anyway. So the mechanism is the same thing. It's useful to understand, um, but this just makes it a little easier to do. And one other thing I want to point out that's really cool, and I believe this is a, a byproduct of the UI refresh, is that there's a warning that popped up here of form view at inventory column order must include the key column name. And I did not include the key column when I was building this particular form. I had only included image and barcode, and it automatically added name, which is pretty neat. We're going to reorder that. Um, and if, but now we if have our key did, column. And also, on a side note, too, if you did want to hide the key column in some situations because you have an initial value or you're, you're 
you know, uh, your setting is part of that key, you could use the context function um, against that, that key column to basically hide that field on form views if you desire. Um, so to do that, you would navigate to that, that column in the, in the column section of the app editor. Under data. And you're gonna, we're gonna edit the key column called name. And next to the show column here, you're gonna click the little flask on the right side here, because we're gonna actually, instead of just blindly hiding the, the value for all views of the app, we're gonna target just the form views themselves to basically hide that, that value. And so you'll, expand that and you're gonna type context in the formula bar and open up a parentheses. And inside that parentheses, you're gonna type view type. And then you're gonna close that off. And then we're gonna do a um, uh, not equals to form. So, you know, you could do the, the less than, greater than inequality. The other way. Oops. Yep. That, and you could, do, you could do it like that. So basically this formula, um, and there's a lot of other different functions you could use with context, such as view type. But with this, you're basically telling AppSheet to hide that key column from the form view. Um, if you don't want to show it to the user, right? Now, obviously you want to make sure that you have an initial value set like a unique ID or, or something like that that's being calculated. And this is prob this probably isn't the best example because this is a name, but um, hopefully that kind of illustrates a way to hide some, some fields that you necessarily don't want to show to the user because they're just not useful information for them. All right, and as you can see, name has vanished. Excellent, great little tip there, Rich. All right, so question-wise, apologies. Okay, so we had a, a question from Lucinda, and I believe we answered it. Um, reordering columns in forms now. You wouldn't need a slice for just reordering. We just covered that with Praveen and Rich. Uh, let's see if anyone else has any questions, uh, please feel free to post within the either the chat box or on the uh, thread in the community as well. We'll make sure we address that for you also. All right. Um, Rich or Praveen, any other tips or tricks regarding QR codes or barcodes? I know we've talked a lot about barcodes, maybe something on the QR code front. Well, the choice often between QR code and barcode is really made independent of the app itself. In other words, uh, there's already stuff, you know, um, equipment in a factory or products on a, in a, you know, in a shop or whatever that have codes on them. And so really you just want to make sure the app can consume whatever code is being used. And sometimes it's QR, sometimes it's barcode, just what it is. Uh, the most common case that I've seen, uh, here we just showed really simple apps. The most common case I've seen is there's already some table, a lookup table with data corresponding to products or whatever it is, and it's got a key, and the barcode is the key, uh, acts like a key for that table. Mm -hmm. And then you have another table where you're collecting information, and in this other table, the barcode is a reference to the lookup table, right? So you've got a reference to the products, for example, and that's what you're populating by scanning the barcode. So you scan into a reference column. Um, because it's a valid reference, you're able to look up information from the product, and then you record something, which is uh, maybe the presence of inventory, the count of the inventory, um, the um, status of something, whether it's damaged or not. So that's the, the that's the sort of the 90% pattern. And then there's other use cases that uh, don't quite fit that pattern, but uh, it, that's usually where people start. Right, that's a good point. Um, Rich, did you have anything else to add on that front? 
Uh, the, I guess the one thing I'll, I'll add just kind of popped in my mind is in some situation, and this is on the, the side of barcode or QR code generation, sometimes you might want to generate the QR code inside the app itself um, because it might be used for other interactions um, as part of your workflow. And to do that, you basically, you'd have to use an API that, um, that exists to basically generate, uh, a, or not an API, but a, a hyperlink that generates a, an image, whether it's a QR code or, or a barcode. And in this case, I'm gonna put this in the chat box, uh, Jennifer, um, so we can you know, add this to uh, an image column. But if you have a hyperlink that generates a QR code based off variables, you can use other, you know, other column values to basically generate QR codes in real time. So what we would do here is take this hyperlink and you can see this is using Google API's uh, QR code generator. And there's a lot of, and there's some documentation on this and I'll, I'll post this after the call, but you could, you know, use the combination of that hyperlink and have the, uh, a virtual column that generates a uh, unique hyperlink uh, when you want to and displays that QR code based off of other values in your record. Ooh, good trick. Okay, so, let's walk, let's walk through, go ahead, adding that. So, so to add that, you would um, go ahead and go to your data section and go to your columns for your table that you're looking to add that functionality. And we're gonna add a virtual column to that table. We've clearly labeled it for you at the top of the um, that particular data table. And we'll call this QR code. Okay, and then we're gonna open up the formula, the app formula here, and we're gonna paste that link. Okay. So this is an example template, right? So the nice thing about this is, uh, well, we'll wrap this in quotes. Double quotes, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of math operators inside of that. <laughs> we can't parse really well. Um, so this gives you the format, and what you can do is concatenate. Uh, if you want to open that back up, Jennifer, yep. that 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 link is. You could take this hyperlink and basically concatenate a hyperlink together, so you could swap out. If you have other variables such as you know the the text field, which you could see after CHL equals where it says hello world, you could basically remove that and put in a column value if you wanted to. Um, that'll you know if we wanted to show the name or you know basically generate a QR code for the name, you could remove that and then use the concatenate function to add you know that first part of the hyperlink to whatever variable, uh, whatever column value you want to add to that. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that, that's basically how you can create those dynamic QR codes. And we'll just keep this like it is for now, and you can go ahead and hit save, Jennifer. This is going to be a static link, but. And the concatenate uh, info, we have a few webinars where we covered that pretty extensively that I can link out to. We also have some great documentation for those that are interested in, in going that direction. Um, and then for, all right. for, for type, we're going to select image for the column type. Yep. Not that long. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, you can go ahead and, and uh, hit save. I have a little guide box that's blocking all the controllers. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. It's a little bit of a dance. All right. So then in any detail view um, that you have with your app, you can then see that QR code for that specific record. So if you want to go ahead and create a detail view and connect that to the if we maybe we already have one. Yeah, if you just open up avocado, for example, that you you know. Avocado, that sounds delicious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, scroll down, we should see that um, that QR code in the app now, there right? There you go. So, 
And like I said, you know, this is a, a static QR code because we just copy and paste that link there. But, you know, concatenating, you know, constructing your own link to an API will allow you to dynamically create these QR codes uh, based off the record information. I copied an example of that into the chat thing, uh, Jen. I'm not quite sure how to post it to everybody, but um, oh yeah, might we be something can... that you could show if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were just in... the image we just did. No. I think it's under QR. It's a virtual column. I think. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Apologies. <laughs> my little box. No warnings triggered. Okay. So that's, that's very similar to what Rich had there. It's just that instead of a fixed text, it uses um, the name of the column, name of the, of the product in this case. All right. So we go back into Avocado, and this is after the recent save. You see yeah, the I QR mean, code there again as you, well. You can't really tell that it's encoded something different, <laughs> but it has. We, try, we tried to make the magic happen. <laughs> we tried to make it seem like a transition. But what's great is consistency, right? You get the same results going either way, or similar results, I should say, going either, using either uh, approach. That sounds like a fair statement. I'm going with the fact that that's a fair statement. Um, all, right, all right, I'm gonna do one more sleep for questions. Okay. All right, so I think that's it for kind of questions. Um, let me pull up the rest of our deck. All right, so we are going, we have just a few moments left. So if there's any final questions, feel free to add. Um, but we're gonna wrap up for right now. So um, I hope this was helpful. We've been getting a lot of questions about just working with barcodes and QR codes in general. And so we try to keep this simple. Um, thank you, Praveen and Rich for both talking through it. I know doing it is one thing, but having to talk somebody through it is a completely different experience. So thank you for providing the verbal overview in terms of how to go about accomplishing um, or being successful using these particular features. Uh, so for those that have been inquiring about QR codes and barcodes and all of that, go ahead and start using them and let us know what applications um, and use cases you're using these in. If you have a particular industry that you're looking for insight on, um, feel free to post in the community and we'll, we'll see what kind of resources we can get you or perhaps somebody else has a unique and interesting way that they've been using this. Um, one case in particular that I think is really interesting and very timely that we'd been involved with recently uh, is one regarding um, asset management for hospitals and helping hospitals, ERs in particular, locate different items like ventilators, for example, um, in a very large space because things had been move moved around quite a bit and they were able to leverage a QR code and Richard Praveen, you might know this a little better than I, but they were using QR codes and barcodes. They were using the XY functionality as well, if I remember correctly, to locate that particular asset on a map within the hospital. Does that sound accurate? Uh, yeah, that's um, part of the challenge was keeping track of where something is in a space. So it, it, in, yep. this could be assets in a hospital, it could be things in a, in a warehouse, um, and being able to visualize that. Um, yeah. and, and one of the nice things is because with your app sheet apps, you can automatically capture um, geolocation. So you, you, it's quite it's possible to build an app that lets you scan something. It automatically captures the, the thing you scanned and um, where that happened. And then it can be visualized back in, you know, in the back office. So whoever is sort of monitoring all this can see all of these different things on an indoor map and so um, yeah that was the cool. use case they had and that was very cool awesome and actually uh, Chris just pinged us to say he works in a hospital with asset management and he'd like to understand this more so Chris we will follow up with some information on what that looked like um, but yeah uh, cool thank you for joining us 
Can I add one other thing, Jen? Yeah, um, absolutely. Just like we have this for barcode scanning, there's something a complete, uh, perfect dual of this with um, scanning NFC tags. And um, NFC is near field communication, and there's sort of a form of tags that you put on things that uh, you don't even need to bring up like a, um, a camera and point it at a barcode, but proximity and swiping something in proximity allows you to detect the tag and the information encoded on it. So that's a feature we've had for more than a year. Um, yeah. uh, it's particularly useful in um, environments like, you know, factory environments and stuff like that. Um, it's a higher investment to get into it because you have to actually have NFC tags that you put on things, um, but it's less work to scan them. So um, we're interested in people who want to go explore that functionality as well. Excellent. And I will post documentation to the NFC tagging a bit on this particular forum uh, or on the thread for this particular um, webinar as well. Uh, all right. So we are nearly out of time. Um, there's one question regarding partners. I will actually follow up with this individual separately. Thank you so much for posting the question. Um, we'll have some additional information for you um, on that particular note. But for now, We'll wrap up. Um, Rich and Praveen, thank you again for joining us and doing kind of a walk through of what seems like basic functionality, um, but are really we know are really important and impactful for a number of our app creators. So appreciate you both taking the time. Um, and we also appreciate all of you for joining us right now as well. Um, Praveen and Rich, do you have any closing notes or thoughts um, for the audience? Uh, no, thanks for, thanks for having me on and um... You know, if, if if any of you out there have questions, you know, I, I could certainly I'll I'll be monitoring the the forum post, the community post for this web hours for the rest of the day, and I'll answer your questions directly. Yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, please send any questions our way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, with that, folks, stay um, to to borrow a quote from our dear Thierry, who many of you know. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. And we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you so much.